I'm glad that you can be part of the gathering of this particular faith community. And uh, I want to invite Carl to bring the cross. I can see that he just did. You might see him there. And Brian, um, those candles may or may not already be lit, but thank you for reminding me of that. And if anybody at home wants to light candles or do things to help yourself feel like you're in a sacred space, I welcome you to do that as well. I'd like to bring the announcements to your attention. They're in the um, weekly email that comes out, but on Mondays, there's a gathering of folks who pray together and that's at 9 a.m. and that's via Zoom. And so you'll need a link and you can either ask Mylene Marie, who's here on with us for the link, or you can ask Lisa Malecki for the link. And either way, we'll make sure that you get that. Each Thursday, there's a Bible study at 7 p.m. And we've been working our way through the book of Hosea. I believe we're getting very close to the end. And we invite you to be part of that group. Um, you get to dig in and see the relevancy of the scriptures and also get to have uh, more dialogue than a Sunday morning gathering allows for. So that's a great thing to be part of. Also, Pastor Kenneth has been asked to facilitate and lead an anti-racism anti -racism Christianity seminars that are happening with a church in Arizona. And so we are the lucky benefactors of getting to participate as well. And so on our email that goes out, you can see links where you can either, if you can get on at the time that they're doing the recording, then you can get to see the interview being recorded. Or if not, you can at least get to go to the church site and see the ones that have already been recorded. And then there's also a study guide and things. And it's really challenging and inspiring. So um, I invite you to be part of that as well. Uh, there's pastoral care available on a regular basis. You can again see the bulletin for more about that. I'm hoping that you've all received oh wait, these in the mail. Um, the ability to vote is a great privilege that we have here in the US. And so we wanna make sure that everyone gets to have their vote count. So please do that. And um, we all hope of course that your faith informs your political leanings, right? And yet even at that, we have different points of view. But one of the things I want you to especially think about is Proposition J. The Interfaith Solidarity Network has been promoting it and they've had rallies and seminars about it. And you know, there's many different ballots, you know, everything has a, an outcome that matters. Um, but Prop J is uh, particularly an opportunity for faith communities and people who care about our community to try to make a difference. So I invite you to particularly read into that if you haven't yet. At this moment, I wanna ask you to, if you haven't had a chance to kind of gather yourself or, or get focused or allow for God's peace to feel real to you yet, let's take a moment to, um, to, to be quiet and to sense that peace in our own selves and then we'll share it with each other. So I invite you to take a deep breath. Now hold it for a second and then exhale and take another and exhale again. God, we're so grateful to be part of a community of faith. We've got your presence within us, we've got your presence outside of us, and we have your presence between us. And that's such a great thing. Thank you for the opportunity to be together today. And I pray that we will make space for you and that we'll notice you, hear you, see you, share you, act on the things that you um, inspire within us. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. May the peace of God be with you all. And also with you. Thank you, Lana. That very, that grounded me and brought me here into this space. And I do want to make space for the Lord today. So let's all sing together. Lord, let us see all that you are, all that you mean. Open our ears, Lord, let us hear all that you are. Be loud and clear. Please be near. And as our praises rise,
like the wind fill up this place we welcome you in come jesus come come like the rain open the sky and show us your face oh lord we Tina. Good morning, Bethel family. Let's continue and worship together. This is a new song, um, but I think it should be pretty easy to catch on. So I think we're just going to dive in the deep end with both feet and just declare today that whatever is going on in our hearts, in our minds, um, whatever battles that we may face, the things that we speak, the things that um, we are, aren't able to speak, we declare today that we will see a victory because we know who the battle belongs to. We don't know about tomorrow, but we know who holds our hand. Let's sing a new one, family. The verse goes like this. <clears throat> the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness fails, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. Let's sing that first verse again, the weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Amen. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Here's the chorus. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Sing that chorus. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. We declare, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. Oh. There's power. 
verse 2. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, we will win. He will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story's going to end. Yes, I know how this story ends. Let's sing the chorus. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. our hearts today oh here's how the bridge goes you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good oh you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Let's sing that again. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good, cause he's got like that, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Time you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Cause I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. Lord and nobody else, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Amen. And now we'll invite Chris to do the reading. And Chris, you might need to unmute yourself. The scripture, the scripture reading this morning is from Numbers 6, 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Thank you, Chris. I invite you at this time to uh, pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. 
O God, our strength and our redeemer. We pray, dear God, that these moments of worship never become so familiar that they are predictable. And may we always, always, always be open and ready to the different amazing ways in which your spirit can move and your spirit can speak. We pray this in God's son's name. Amen. We continue our prayer series today, and today I would like to look at a prayer of blessing in the Old Testament book of Numbers. Both Jew Jewish and Christian traditions name Moses as the author of this Old Testament book. And I would wonder how many of you have ever read any passages in the book of Numbers? In this book, Moses is not only a central figure, but Moses is a person whom the Lord commands to record events. The opening verse of this book reads as such. The Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation of the first day, the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of Egypt. From these opening words, we were given really a glimpse of what the content of this book would be like. It's a book that will be filled with statistics and numerical data and population counts and tribal and, and priestly figures. It, it, it follows the Hebrew children's journey tracing events that began in the second year after they had escaped from Egypt and while they were camped at Mount Sinai. And then it continues for about 38 years when the children of Israel are in Moab by Jordan opposite Jericho and about ready to cross into the promised land. The book looks backwards and then the book looks forwards. The book reminding the Hebrew people of their past blessings but also reminding them and pointing them towards God's promises of the future. The teachings in the book of Numbers seems to be directed toward the younger generation of Hebrews who were children of the former slaves who escaped Israel through the Red Sea at the hand of God. Numbers also makes known significant events that would occur later on in scripture. Events such as uh, Joshua and Caleb and the 12 spies who encouraged uh, Israel to take possession of the land. We'll find that in Numbers chapter 13. It, it reminds us of events like Moses striking the rock as the children of Israel were walking through the wilderness, the providing water for the thirsty Israelites. That's in Numbers chapter 20. It reminds us of Moses lifting up a bronze serpent on a pole so that believing Israelites might be healed of their snake bites in Numbers chapter 21. But not only does Numbers display and in the endurance of the Hebrew people, it also demonstrates the test of patience and determination of God's faithfulness towards the children of Israel. As we journey through this account of the life of the history of the Hebrew people, we, we are twice taken on a long winding path through a desert of painful details of census for all 12 tribes of Israel. The book also contains kind of priestly instructions, blessings, and prayers on behalf of the people of God. Now, many of you, if you looked at the link that was sent to you for this week's uh, message, you'll know that this will be part one of a two-part message on a prayer of blessing because this sermon, I really just want to set it up and again, give you some of the background history and look at two points of this prayer. But the next week I will finish off the sermon with the second half of this prayer. And it is such a priestly prayer of blessing that is the focus of this message today. This brief yet powerful benediction prayer found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, it's really filled with 
some potent words that paint a picture of hope for not only the children of Israel, but for you and I today. The Lord spoke to Moses and instructed him to tell Aaron, the priest, and his son to pray a blessing over the Hebrew people. This is how you are to bless the people of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall thy name, so shall they rather put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. It's a unique and distinct prayer of benediction that really represents an announcement of divine blessing on the people by the lips of the priest, but at the hand of God. In many Christians and some Jewish worship experience, this same benediction is still heard as the worship leaders pray over the people, mostly at the end of a worship experience. Often in life, it seems that the more acquainted we become with a thing or the more acquainted or familiar we become with a person, it's easier to kind of disregard, disrespect, or even take for granted that the thing or the person is really meaningful. Now, if, if you are sitting next to your spouse or your partner or your children, um, it, this would be a good time to say, honey, that's not true for you or me. Even in church, when we consider segments of the worship experience in, in more liturgical worship experience, we, we say the confessions and the forgiveness, and we say the Apostles' Creed, and we say the Lord's Prayer, and we read scripture lessons that for the most part, if you're in a community that uses a lectionary series, you hear those same lessons every three years. And some of these things are so frequently done or so frequently repeated or so frequently read and heard and, and so regularly that we become accustomed to them. And after a while, it's as if we're, if we're not really careful, they can produce only a, a mechanical, a superficial, a false passing consideration to these very, very familiar words. With, with minimal effort, we're able to dutifully recite them, whether out of routine or out of ritual. But we often have to ask ourselves when we get stuck in that rut, do they only provide nominal benefit? Do they only provide a, a fleeting thought? a nostalgic reflection, a temporary feel-good experience. Theology professor J.R. DeWitt describes spiritual occurrences this way. There is a human tendency, he says, in religious, academic, and church settings to become so familiar with things regarded as holy that over time they lose their sense of sacredness. Familiarity can indeed lead to a greater sense of security and liking, but it and also has the potential of breeding contempt. Familiarity can teach an indifference and insignificance to things and to people, which silence and numb us in a life of unconcern, a life of coldness, where the words we have attempted or admitted to memory rather, the words that we speak become empty. They become void. They lose their intended effect. It's like the story I heard of, um, of a wife who went to her husband and said, honey, do you love me? And he said, well, um, Baby, I told you I love you when we got married. And if that changed, I'll tell you that again. Uh, he was not in the habit of saying words just for saying words. It's, it's, it's a caution to our mind that we can say and do things so often that they just lose their effect. 
we become numb by them. We become numb by them. So I said that in essence to kind of prep you to say, I'm inviting you to consider fresh and to consider anew as we look at this biblical prayer that many of you have probably heard multiple times over your lifetime as you have left a worship experience. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. The simple and abstract words such as bless, keep, gracious, face, countenance, and peace, they're all filled with images that are lost very much so in the English translation. So let's look at this prayer, the first two section of this prayer, the Lord bless you. The Hebrew word for bless is, is a word which means to kneel and to show respect. One biblical commentary stated it, it's to bring a gift to another while kneeling out of respect. Bless means to do or to give something of value to another. Elohim, the Lord, the Lord respects us by providing for us and providing for our needs. We are in turn to respect Elohim by giving of ourselves as servants of God to each other. The Lord bless you. Everything pledged by this phrase is to be understood as God's intention to bless God's people and therefore God's people challenge to bless others. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The prayer doesn't stop, however, with a blessing, but it includes a second part, which is the Lord keep you. The second part of the prayer supports the meaning of the first part. In the New Testament Gospel of Matthew and Luke, the care of the shepherd has for the sheep under his watch is recorded and really demonstrated in that story when the shepherd leaves 99 sheep to rescue one lost sheep. A familiar devotional book called Portals of Prayer, speaking of this particular parable in this particular text, the writer asked the question, if you were the shepherd, would you respond automatically with a yes to leaving 99 sheep to go and look for one? The writer goes on to say, we would be more inclined to say, let me think about that. It really depends on which sheep it is. We would do a cost benefit analysis to determine if the effort and the risk involved would be worth the possible gain. We could rationalize it's only, you know, it's only one sheep after all. Our view of the situation changes drastically, however, when we put ourselves in the position of the lost sheep instead of the shepherd. Shepherd loved and cared for the sheep so much that it was not uncommon to find a shepherd away from the camp, out with the flock overnight frequently in order to protect the flock from predator, a shepherd would construct a cage of thorn bushes around the herd of sheep that would be a hedge of protection for the sheep. The shepherd used this cage of thorn bushes to guard and to protect the sheep. The verb that's used in the text for keep literally means to guard and to protect, suggesting to you and me that God promises to do for those whom God love to guard and to protect. 
This is the same accusation, if you remember, in the story of Job. In Job, the first uh, chapter in the 10th verse, the, the, the writer says that the adversary said, the reason I can't get to Job is because God has put a hedge, a protection, a guard around Job's household on every side. You have blessed and protected the work of Job's hand and Job's possessions have increased in the land so that nothing can harm him. God is accused of putting a hedge of protection around Job, his family, and around his blessings. The gospel songwriter said once in a song, Jesus, be a hedge all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along my way. I know you can, and I know you will fight my battle if I just keep still. Lord, be a fence all around me every day. The verb used for keep means to guard, to protect. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. These two words connect to God in this first clause of the prayer. And they point to God being responsible for the work of protecting. Not only were they promised provision by God, they were also assured protection by God in this prayer. God promises and is prepared to provide the skills, the know-how, and the means required for our living. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you means that the Lord who has sworn to bless is also set to guard not only the blessings but those whom have been blessed by God. This is the promise in this prayer. Now I realize that it's easy to become a cynic when it comes to promises. If you're like me almost daily both our email and our snail mail boxes are flooded with junk mail that assure us that we are, um, we're the lucky grand prize winner. And now in this um, election year, these promises by politicians that if you vote for me, I will do you fill in the blanks, X, Y, and Z. Or even some of the propositions, if you vote yes on this, which sometimes means you're voting no, this will happen. But the ones that get me the most are the ones that come with promises that you are the grand prize winner. You're the recipient. There is a $10 million account waiting for you in New Zealand. If you just provide your social security number, your tracking, your tracking account number, and your bank account number. Promises. All we need to do is Contact XYZ company by calling 1-800-GET-CASH. Provide your credit card, your bank account number, your routing number, and wham, $8 million will appear in your account. Like you, I'm sure I routinely file these letters away in my recycling bin, on my trash folder, on my computer. No matter how good the promises seem, we know that they're just empty promises. And so it's easy for us to take a similar approach with the promises that we read in scriptures, the promises that we even hear and, and are recorded in scriptures from God. But there's someone here today besides me who could say that they have been blessed by God. But we are blessed by God never to hoard those blessings for ourselves. As we are blessed, it is crucial that we learn and remember two important lessons in life. God never blesses us at the expense of someone else. God never blesses us at the expense of someone else. And God always blesses us to be a blessing to someone else. Rick Warren in a daily devotion a few years ago lifted up four guidelines or four principles for God's blessings. He said, first of all, our blessings from God should overflow to others. We are blessed not just to feel good, not just to be happy, not just to be comfortable, but we have been blessed by God in order to be a blessing to someone else. Somebody type amen in the text. 
So the first principle of blessing is that it must flow outwardly. The blessing comes from God inwardly, but it must flow outwardly. The more we are blessed by God, it seems that scripture suggests the more God expects us to be a blessing to others. Jesus said it this way in Luke chapter 12, verse 6. Much is required from the person to whom much has been given. Our blessings to others always come back to us. The more we bless and help others, the more God blesses us. Of course, that's not a reason to bless and help others, but it's a way of saying that we can never outgive God. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the message Bible says, be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier on yourself. Give away your life and you'll find that life comes back to you. Not merely given back, but given back bonus blessings. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. We can never outgive God. The more we bless others in the world around us, the more it seems. God opens us up to more and more blessing. Paying it forward is the way one writer describes this approach of living. Rick Warren play, playing a little game with God to see who will win at giving the most blessings away. That's what he said. Play a little game with God and see who will win at giving the most blessings away. The more we bless others, it seems like the more blessings are poured into our life. So I want to ask you a personal question. Who are you blessing right now? When was the last time you blessed someone? Who have you blessed lately? I'm not talking about a panhandle that you put a quarter or $10 in their jar. I'm not talking about that. Maybe you bless someone with a smile. Maybe you bless someone with just a greetings that no one else speaks to. Maybe you blessed someone by letting them into your home or your guest home. Maybe you have blessed someone with a phone call. Maybe you've blessed someone in this time of pandemic where we're all isolated from each other with, with a text message by leaving a note on their door. When was the last time you and I have blessed someone? I know you and I have been blessed because the very fact that we're on this Zoom worship service means we're blessed. We woke up with our mind active. If we woke up and we inhaled and we exhaled and we stepped our feet on the ground and we still have the activities of our limbs. We have eyes and even though some of us need glasses to help us, we still can see. We have ears and even we though we might have earring aids, we still can hear. So we have been blessed. But the question on the table right now is when was the last time you and I have been a blessing to someone? Whose life have you made a spiritual, emotional, physical, financial deposit into lately? When was the last time you and I have been a blessing to someone? You see, when we bless others, God takes care of our needs. When we concentrate on blessing others, God takes care of our needs. Scripture seems to affirm this, that there's almost nothing God won't do for the person who really blesses others. In fact, God guarantees, according to Luke chapter 18, blessings to those who bless others. Anyone who gives up anything of the kingdom of God will certainly receive many times more than she or he will ever imagine in life. When we care about helping other people, God assumes responsibility for our difficulties. 
God not, doesn't take over responsibility, but God gives us power. God gives us strength. God gives us the determination. God gives us the will and the ability to march through whatever difficulties that we have. Because God is more better at handling our difficulties than we are. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. In addition to being blessed by God, I also suspect that someone here or someone listening or someone who will listen at some point could say that I have been kept by God. So not only have we been blessed by God, we have been kept by God. God was protecting me. Oh, you, you don't know it, but that, that, that accident that you came up on three minutes later, God was protecting you. That marriage that you did not get into, <laughs> God was protecting you. God was watching over you. Those drugs that you might have been messing around with, but they didn't take your life. God was protecting you. God was guiding you. God was guarding you. God was keeping you all to be kept by Jesus. The Bible declares in Psalm 17 and 8, keep me as the apple of your eye. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. In Jude 24 it says, now unto God who is able to keep you from falling. Isaiah chapter 26 says, you will be kept in perfect peace when our mind is stayed or perfectly focused on God. The songwriter, the old gospel songwriter said it this way, all oh, to be kept by the power of God, kept in the world yet unspotted, going where Jesus has trod. to be kept by the power of God. Well, this is where I'm gonna pause for today and we're gonna pick it up next week. But the two points that I wanna leave with you for our time together today is the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. You and I have not been blessed to hoard it. You and I have not been blessed to flaunt it, but you and I have been blessed to pass it on. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Amen.
all the earth. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, everyone. We're moving into a time of tithes and offerings. And so as we have been blessed today and our time together by these um, assistance of God in creating worship, we are inspired, encouraged, and empowered to take those blessings and be a blessing back into our world and our community so as you are able and feel inspired, now is the perfect time to give. If you haven't already, I believe there's a slide with donation information. Otherwise, I can put it in the chat. Um, thank you very much. So you can mail your checks to our church address at 17500 Burbank Boulevard, Encino, California, 91316. You can give online via our website, and you can text uh, Bethel and Sino to 77977 to receive a secure link to donate through the Push Pay app. Thank you all very much for your continued steadfast giving and uh, believing in and supporting this community as we seek to support and love on and give to other people and to support the staff of the school and the church and all of the things required to making this wheel turn around. So we thank you all very much. And I will pray a brief prayer over the offering and then we'll move into a time of prepared prayers and there will be space for individual prayer requests. So you can put them in the chat if you'd like me to read them aloud at that point. And then we will collectively say the Lord's prayer. So if you will prepare your hearts, minds and body for prayer in whatever way makes you feel most comfortable. Good and gracious God, thank you for these offerings and these gifts that the people of the Lord have presented before you through us, Bethel Encino, we ask that they be used to magnify your will and your work in the world, um, that we do what is right and just and merciful and humble and loving and compassionate, uh, not only in what we do with our money and resources, but with how we love upon one another in our human family as you have called us. We praise you and thank you for the faithfulness of those who are able to give and for those who desire to give but don't have the fiscal means right now. We pray that you create those opportunities of abundance and security, not only in their lives, but so they can go be blessings to others. And we also thank you for each and every way that the members of this community gift their time and resources, not just financially, but with their hearts and talents and tools in the name of your son, we lift all of this up, for it belongs to you, and we are merely the stewards. Amen. Okay. Moving into the prayers. Almighty creator, be with our world and all of the people upon it. Bring peace where there is conflict. 
we especially lift up and pray for the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia this day. We pray for the members of our community whose family and friends in Armenia are, are directly affected by this. We pray for healing where there is disease, especially those who are suffering from COVID-19 and all the medical professionals and caregivers that are working to heal and help. Help us to be responsible stewards of the resources that you have provided for our livelihood. We ask that you bring comfort and shelter to those around the world who ache for the security of a roof over their head or a bed to call their own. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Good and gracious God, we pray for our country, for our leaders seeking truth and justice. We pray for the courage to hold one another and our leaders accountable, especially through our active civic engagement and our vote. And may we be called to act in the interest of justice for everyone, especially the most marginalized and disenfranchised among us. Give us compassionate hearts to love one another as you have first loved us. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Living Spirit, we pray for one another, for our friends and neighbors sitting in their own homes this morning. And we yearn for, with joyous expectation, the time when we can be together again physically in community. And we wait until it is the right time for that to be so. Restore unto us joy, hope, and peace. We ask that you heal our relationships. We ask that you soothe our spirits and our bodies. Lift our hearts out of the depths of grief, anxiety, depression, and monotony. Give us a gratitude for the simple joys of life. Help us to savor the unique and individual beauties of being alive in this moment, in this time and place in these challenges and triumphs. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. I invite you to, as you're able and interested, put your personal prayer requests in the chat. You can either do that to the whole channel or if you'd prefer for it to be anonymous, you can just send it to me and I will read it accordingly. So I'll give everyone a moment to do that. Um, while I am waiting for some to filter in, uh, I see uh, we lift up and prayer those going through loss. For Maria and her son Miguel, who recently moved out of a room in the house where other tenants had COVID, they're grateful for their new apartment, but Maria will now struggle to make rent. The ability, we also pray for the ability to stay positive and compassionate while political dissension ratchets up. Yes, so for loss and so, and for our sibling Maria and her son Miguel and their new situation, and just for all of our own abilities to be positive and compassionate and empowered in this tense time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up Lisa Malecki and um, her children, Brittany and Bo, as their father is struggling with some illness. Uh, we just hold that whole family in love and light and healing in this difficult time. May they feel comforted and surrounded by God's goodness. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for Mylene's mom as she still struggles with loneliness and depression at the loss of Mylene's dad, and also as she struggles with her own health issues. May she have healing peace and even joy. Amen, amen. Lots of joy and healing for Mylene's mom. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. I lift up a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> um, continued, continued prayers for Steph Zong's spiritual mother, Dr. B, for comfort, strength, and healing through chemo treatment. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. For healing and love in that situation. I also want to pray a prayer of thanksgiving and praise uh, for Steph and Jim who celebrated their 10-year wedding anniversary yesterday uh, and yay for the bl that blessing and their love and commitment which is a blessing to all of us. 
Uh, Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Also, we, we um, lift up Ken, uh, who has COVID-19 and is in hospice care, and for um, Dale, who is uh, his primary caregiver at this time. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We ask for prayers that we would live into hope and remember that God is faithful and God desires to bless us. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We ask for prayers for safety and traveling mercies for Phyllis and her friends who are traveling to Vegas. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We lift up our sister, Debbie Lamb, for continued prayers in her journey um, for healing and for peace and comfort for her. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. I'll give it just a few more moments. Good and gracious God for the prayers that we have shared and the ones carved too deeply in our hearts to yet name. We thank you for we know that you see and hold and keep them all. May we feel safe and empowered to leave them with you, knowing that you have called us into a life that is beyond our fears, our struggles and our worries. And now I invite you all to join me as you're able in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever way and version makes sense to you, in whatever language makes sense to you. Um, may it be so. So, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. May it be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for e from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us commune, Rev. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. I, I, I decided, I don't know if you heard a little plop in the middle of the sermon. Any of, any of you heard that? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I guess I need to tone it down a little bit. In my exuberance, I was stretching and uh, these two somehow disconnected. <laughs> but fortunately for me, I, I'll have to purchase another one for the church, but fortunately there weren't, wasn't a lot of wine in it. So the spill clean up on Isle Bethel. <laughs> but as we prepare to receive communion, I wanna give you just a couple of seconds to find an unbroken vessel that you could use for your chalice and, uh, and some elements that you will use for your bread as we prepare to receive the broken body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, literally. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus did. He took bread and he blessed it. He broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. What we're reminded, and this is very positive um, outcome from this uh, negative experience, that God brings broken pieces back together. And as you receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you might be broken in some areas of your life, but God brings broken pieces back together. These are indeed the gifts of God for you, the people of God. This is the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you indeed bring broken pieces, broken homes, broken lives, broken dreams, broken hopes, broken countries, broken nations back together. We thank you for this opportunity to partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and this reminder of your amazing love for us. In that while we were doing whatever we wanted to do, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. You didn't wait for us to come to you, but you came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And we are forever grateful and we are forever thankful. And may we take the blessings that you have poured into our life and pour them into the lives of those we come in contact with each day of our life. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Amen. Amen. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then one could stand against us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Why do you turn? Why are you turned into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Lord, thank you. Let's sing that chorus. Cause our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Our God. There's no one like you, there's none like you. Verse 2, into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, no. It's not like you, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, oh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Our God, oh, 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 yeah, there's no one like you, there's none like you, there's no one like you. There's none like you. 
family. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. I, I just have one announcement before you begin to sign off. Um, one announcement, if you could just stay on for one second. Um, we've done a straw poll for the starting of the grief class, and we will be starting the grief class on Wednesday, October 21st, Wednesday, October 21st. And I will ask Lisa, who is our host for our Zoom worship service, to send a link out to all of the members of Bethel. And the class will be from 6 to 8. You're welcome to stay any portion of that time that you're available, but uh, it probably would be benefit to, to stay the entire time if you're able to do that. So please mark your calendars that we will begin our grief class on Wednesday, October 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. And there's a workbook that goes with the class. I ordered, I think, 15 or 17 copies of the workbook. So if you would like to pick up a workbook, it will help you as you chart your, your progress through this uh, class. You can uh, contact Lisa and we'll either find a way to get, get it to you. I'm in the office at the church from 8 to 2 on Monday. So you can come by and I will bring the workbook out to your car, um, socially distancing with masks. So please let us know if you will be participating or if you would like to come by and pick up a workbook for the grief class. October 21st, 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you. And some people showed interest in the grief class that might not be local. So just reach out to us and we'll figure out how to get you um, a workbook as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just a couple more announcements, uh, just blessings. If you were blessed by today's service, awesome. I love it. I love to hear that. Also, the Bethel community, which included Pastor Kenneth and some members of council, uh, were asked to record the worship service that went out to the entire synod uh, today for their Sunday service this week. And we did it and it was hashtag fire. Um, and so now that it has been released by the synod and we have all shared worship space together this morning, I know um, I, we are gonna, we'll send it out in an email uh, and that way, um, if y'all are ever needing some little extra God time, like I know I am, like I know I was the day we recorded this, um, I was deeply blessed by Pastor Kenneth's message, the music, the scriptures, everything about it was just perfectly timed to speak to some uh, hurts that were on my heart. So I, I love to um, provide you all with opportunities to get extra God time during the week. It's like, an, uh, like a vitamin like a vitamin. Yeah. Like boost that spiritual immune system, you know, times are hard. So, uh, it's a completely different service that we haven't. Yeah. It's before. completely different. It's a, it's a message Kenneth has not preached for us at Bethel. Um, so it's on Psalm 23. Uh, so if you need that in your life, which, um, you know, spoiler alert, you definitely do. It was amazing. Um, please feel encouraged to watch that. And then also if you're looking for another way to be blessed by the way that we all worship, this is just a time in which I'm going to plug Tina's upcoming spiritual EP, Transcending, out on October 23rd. Um, it is one of the best. It is, I'm seriously already calling it one of the most influential albums of my life. So um, it's spiritual music. It's uplifting. It's heartfelt. Uh, so everybody look out for Tina's social media as she shares songs Thank that you, she's Chelsea. been sharing for us at Bethel and yeah. Yeah, so it's songs that I've been writing for Bethel, actually one of the songs that I wrote that was completely based off of one of Pastor Kenneth's sermons. Um, and so I would appreciate your support. I'm gonna put a link in the chat where you can like pre-save it and get a reminder about it. So yeah, thank Go you. Go be Chelsea. blessed and be a blessing. You're welcome, love you. <laughs> <laughs> love you all. And now you can unmute and say, hey, or what's good or or just go to the bathroom.